William Hayne has been resentenced this week. It's homecoming week on NDSU's campus, and Joe Biden is calling for President Trump's impeachment. You're watching Bison Information Network News. Thank you for joining us. William Hayne was back at the Cass County Courthouse Monday for resentencing for his involvement in the kidnapping and murder of Savannah Graywind back in 2017. Hayne was originally sentenced by a judge to life in prison back in October of 2018. But his new sentence has been reduced to only 20 years behind bars, which has been decided by the North Dakota Supreme Court. While the state's attorney's office believes Hayne deserves life in prison, they respect the court's decision. It's homecoming week, Bison Nation, and a few events have been affected by the snow that's rolling in. The homecoming coronation show tonight at Festival Concert Hall will go on as planned. There will be a show with performing acts, and the 2019 homecoming king and queen will be crowned. The show starts at 7.30 and is free for all students. If you have any questions about the show or the rest of the week's events, visit ndsu.edu slash homecoming. Although students were looking forward to having the homecoming parade close to campus this year, due to weather conditions, it has been canceled. An email regarding the cancellation was sent out earlier today explaining refunds for parade float entry. The parade cancellation will not stop other activities. The homecoming carnival is still on but will be relocated to the Memorial Union Great Plains Ballroom instead of Churchill Field. NDSU invites the community to participate in all of its remaining homecoming activities. House Democrats are preparing for a flurry of subpoenas in the face of the Trump administration's stonewalling of their impeachment investigation. For the first time, former Vice President Joe Biden called for President Trump's impeachment. CNN's Jeff Zellini has more on Biden's announcement in Rochester, New Hampshire. To preserve our Constitution, our democracy, our basic integrity, he should be impeached. For the first time today, Joe Biden calling for the impeachment of President Trump, dropping any caveats of waiting for the outcome of the House investigation. President Trump has indicted himself by obstructing justice, refusing to comply with the congressional inquiry, he's already convicted himself. In a speech in New Hampshire, Biden joining many of his Democratic rivals in calling for Trump's removal from office, saying the president has repeatedly undermined American democracy. We see it in Trump's own words. We see it in the text from State Department officials that have been made public. We see it in his pulling much of the United States government into his corrupt schemes, individuals within the government, his appointees. It's the latest escalation from Biden, who initially supported an impeachment inquiry and planned to withhold final judgment. But he said too many damning details have already been disclosed about Trump, pushing foreign leaders to meddle in the 2020 election. We all laughed when he said he could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot someone and get away with it. It's no joke. He's shooting holes in the Constitution. And we can not let him get away with it. He also mounted another defense of his son, Hunter Biden, and the work for a Ukraine gas company while Biden was vice president, an arrangement Trump has seized upon with no evidence of wrongdoing by either Biden. He's targeted me and my family with lies and distortions and smears. And that's all they are. Because he thinks he will undermine my candidacy for the nomination. Here in New Hampshire, Democratic voters are still sizing up the field, but not Biden's integrity. What do you make of all the back and forth between President Trump and Joe Biden right now? Do you have any questions about Joe Biden's character? No, because uh, I trust him to be more truthful than what we have in, as a president right now. And uh, the negativity is just way beyond. It needs to stop. But even some admirers say the controversy has raised questions about Biden's judgment that may warrant more explanation. Do you have any questions of uh, Joe Biden's integrity or character? Uh, not as much as I do President Trump, but, uh, you know, uh, certainly, you know, there's some questions on how his son got that job and that sort of thing. Until now, Biden has been more cautious than his Democratic rivals to call for an impeachment. In response, President Trump tweeted that Biden's speech was, quote, pathetic. Now let's take a look at the weather for the Fargo-Moorhead area. We had started the week with highs in the upper 60s and sunny, but that changed starting today. We topped out in the upper 30s with rain all throughout the day, and it's expected to continue overnight. Looking at the seven-day forecast, we can expect to see today's rain turn into more of a mix of rain and snow tomorrow. 
We will see the highs in the mid-30s, much like today, and you might need to break out the winter coats for tailgating at the homecoming football game on Saturday. Sunday, we can expect calmer conditions with some rain throughout the day, and Monday is looking cloudy still. You can expect highs in the low 40s, highs 30s on Monday, and looking to gradually warm up throughout the week. But not before Tuesday has another rain and snow mix expected. The snow we get this weekend is not expected to stay on the ground for long. The Main Avenue construction is officially complete, but with a twist and the new funding for flood diversion in Fargo. That and more when we come back. Traffic in downtown Fargo just got easier to navigate. Main Avenue is fully open today, two weeks ahead of its original completion date. The project cost nearly $10.3 million to put together over four months. Its most prominent new feature, a two-lane roundabout. Located at Main Avenue and 2nd Street North, it's the first of its kind in North Dakota. This reopening also includes Veterans Memorial Bridge that links Fargo to Moorhead. A few other phases to Main Avenue's redevelopment are scheduled to begin this spring. On Tuesday, the Fargo-Moorhead Flood Diversion Project was given $510 million to start working on its plan to help control water levels in the area. This diversion is supposed to reduce the amount of flooding in the area from last spring. Senator John Hoven and other members of the state's congressional district has been working with the EPA to help ensure the memorandum gets the necessary signatures. Hoven said, Hoven said, quote, it is an important element of our efforts to build permanent, comprehensive flood protection for the region, end quote. For more information on how the signing was made official, go to Inforum.com and find Patrick Springer's story. Do you know the things in your home that contain the most germs? We'll tell you about that and the new album Rihanna is releasing. After the break. Think you know where the dirtiest place in your house is? Well, you might be scrubbing in the wrong place. In today's Health Minute, CNN's Reed Binion directs your sponges to the germs you should be tackling. There are germs lurking everywhere in our homes, from the kitchen to the bathroom. But what exactly should we be cleaning and how often? In the bathroom, don't just focus on scrubbing the toilet. It's actually cleaner than you think. According to microbiologist Charles Gerber, if you want to cut down on the bacteria in the rest of the room, make sure you close the lid before you flush. Fecal matter can get tossed several feet in the air, which means your toothbrush, makeup, and even towels could get hit. Speaking of towels, those moist cloths are the perfect place for bacteria like E. coli to grow. So make sure you wash them with hot water every three or four days, Gerber says. In the kitchen, those rags and sponges used to wipe down everything are perfect at collecting bacteria like E. coli and salmonella. Think you can just throw them in the microwave or dishwasher to clean? Think again. Your best bet is to just replace them weekly. And surprisingly, water reservoirs like the ones in your coffee machine are one of the germiest places in the kitchen, according to the National Safety Foundation. Check the owner's manual on how to clean it monthly. For today's Health Minute, I'm Reed Binion. Looks like I'm going to go home and clean everything. I agree with you on that. In entertainment news, a, new, a music superstar has a new book, and Broadway has movies on its mind. CNN's David Daniel has this week's Hollywood Minute. Have a Rihanna fan on your holiday gift list? The singer and entrepreneur is releasing The Rihanna Book, a 500-page volume with more than a thousand photos, many of which have never been published before. Rihanna calls it a visual autobiography. It's available October 24th, list price $150. Hi, Frank. Would you like to be a part of history? Yes, I would. The Irishman is headed to Broadway. No, not an adaptation. The Martin Scorsese Netflix film, which is getting a limited theatrical release, will be shown at Broadway's historic Belasco Theater for a month beginning November 1st. In a statement, Scorsese calls the booking a chance to recreate the era of single screen theaters in New York. These girls want to party with us. If they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Merlot! Speaking of Broadway, Sideways is headed for the stage. Tony-winning choreographer Kathleen Marshall is set to helm a musical version of the 2004 film about two friends' misadventures in California wine country. Producers plan a regional staging next year before moving the show to Broadway. No word whether the theater bar will feature Merlot. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. After the break, Isaac will have our sports update. What do you have for us today, Isaac? Well, we got a couple conference openers in women's sports to get to, but first, yet another major test passed in football. Stick around. That's coming up. Another game, another top 10 opponent, yet still, the NDSU football team turned in a performance nothing shy of, say it with me, 
Routine. You're not getting another normal pun out of me this week. Anyway, here's how it happened. Picking things up first quarter. It's Ty Brooks on a handoff, and he's going to find a seam of the defense. He'll take this one all the way. 58 yards to the end zone. NDSU leads it 13-0 at this point. Later, Adam Cofield will sprint the ball, will take the ball and sprint to the outside. He'll be in from four yards out. Bison led 23-3 at the half. They would not let up. Third quarter we had. Christian Watson takes a mid-screen. He's going to bob and weave his way 42 yards to the end zone. It's the first touchdown in his career for the Tampa native. Bison win this one big over Illinois State, 37-3 the final. It does not get much easier from here, however, as this weekend NDSU has yet another high-ranked team on the docket, Northern Iowa. That meeting with the 10th-ranked Panthers is set for Saturday, 1 o'clock at the Fargo Dome. The Bison have won five in a row against the Panthers since 2014. We have highlights and reaction coming next week. The NDSU volleyball team had lost each of its previous five decisions before last weekend. Now, after playing in the friendly confines of the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse, the Bison appear to be back on track. Friday night against Purdue Fort Wayne was the team's annual breast cancer awareness night, so NDSU got to bust out the pink jerseys and even check this out. The officials had pink whistles, a nice touch. The Bison yet again won a tight first set, but unlike the previous weekend's road trip, this time did not give up control of the game. Alexis Bachmeyer had a game high 16 kills, Ali Malk chipped in with nine, and Callie Hegerly had eight to go with her 22 assists and 11 digs and yes you took this one in straight sets. Sunday afternoon against Western Illinois went by nearly the same script, though NDSU had greater control from the start. Emily Halverson led the Bison with nine kills, and freshman Syra Tanshin had eight. The Leathernecks could not get into a good rhythm all afternoon and were swept. NDSU is now 2-2 two and two in the Summit League and will host South Dakota for homecoming tomorrow night, followed by a matinee against Denver on Sunday. After nearly a month away from home, the NDSU women's soccer team opened conference season at Dakota Field Sunday against South Dakota. Bison looking, at, looking excited to be back in, at home in front of their home fans and narrowly avoid an early scare. Here comes a big save early from Monica Polgar, the senior keeper, keeping it out. NDSU does get on the board in the 11th minute as freshman forward Lavin Douglas takes it away from the defenders and puts it in the back of the net. That's the first goal in Douglas's career. The Bison would later get a goal from Mariah Haberly and Hang on to win 2-1 to one for hard-earned three points. They're now 3-1-1 one one at Dakota Field this season. They're in action tonight on the road against Omaha. The NDSU men's basketball team was picked to finish number one in the Summit League this season in the coaches' preseason poll. Seniors Vinny Shahid and Tyson Ward were named preseason all-conference. Shahid to the first team and Ward to the second team. NDSU finished the regular season last year 15-15 and, and fourth in the Summit League before ultimately reaching the round of 64 in the NCAA tournament. As for everyone else on the men's side in the Summit League, the poll has South Dakota finishing second or Robertson third, and Omaha rounds out the top four. The Bison's regular season tips off November 5th at Kansas State. And the Bison women's basketball, women's basketball team is projected to finish seventh in the Summit League this year. They begin this season under new leadership with Jory Collins now at head coach. Their season begins November 6th. Last Friday, the Summit League made a major announcement. The conference is inviting the University of St. Thomas to go D1. St. Thomas's athletic programs are currently Division III and would need an NCAA waiver to make the transition to the Summit League within its intended two years. The Tommies were voted out of its current conference, the MIAC, back in May due to competitive balance reasons. This move would make St. Thomas the second Division I school in Minnesota. And last night, the MLB playoffs brought us something most athletes can only dream about. Check this out. Down 3-1 to one in the eighth inning in a winner-take-all game five, the Washington Nationals hit back-to-back -back home runs off of Clayton Kershaw to tie the game. This one coming up, a moonshot by Juan Soto. That would force extra innings, and everybody likes some free baseball in a decisive game in the playoffs. To the 10th, former Dodger Howie Kendrick hits this one out to center field with the bases loaded, a grand slam. Washington hangs on. They win their first playoff series since they were called the Montreal Expos back in 1981. They play St. Louis in the NLCS tomorrow night. And that's this week in sports. Up next is a final check of the weather, and Bison on the Street, stick around. One man's trash is another man's treasure, which is why a group of historians in New York are digging up old outhouses. Jeremy Roth promises to explain in today's Take a Look at This. 
group of collectors in New York are digging under old outhouses looking for artifacts. They call themselves privy diggers. You just never know what you're going to find next. I know what you're thinking, man, people back in the day sure ate some weird stuff. But no, actually, in the 18 and 1900s, people would also use their outhouses to dispose of garbage. That's how this group of historians in Buffalo have unearthed such a collection of relics. Pocket watches, porcelain dolls, and historic bottles, among other things, all found beneath privies. You can pick up something that somebody hasn't touched in 175 years. Now you're probably thinking, ew. But believe it or not, the group says there's no health risk in digging up old outhouses. Everything from years ago is decomposed, and uh, there's really nothing in there to be concerned about. For these explorers, one person's trash truly is another's treasure. The show must go on. <laughs> this Arizona high school marching band proved that old saying when sprinklers interrupted their show. Corona Del Sol's band and color guard was performing at a game in Tempe when it happened. Spectators showed their appreciation with rousing applause, and to their credit, the performers didn't skip a beat, continuing to play through the spray. Eventually, the band was instructed to reset their performance. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. As Isaac just mentioned in sports, NDSU's homecoming football game is this weekend against Northern Iowa. And Bison Information Network reporter Lindsay Iverson asked students whether they thought the Bison would win in this week's Bison on the Street. Well, I hope we win. I'm predicting that we're going to win. I predict that NDSU will win. Oh, boy. Um, I don't really follow football a whole bunch, football a whole bunch, but um, I know that the Bison always win, so... Uh, I think we're going to win pretty easily, yeah. I think the Bison are going to win. The Bison are going to destroy them. We're going to win. Oh, we're going to win, duh. Um, Bison's going to win. Uh, I think it's going to be a blowout, and NDSU is going to wipe the floor with them. Bison win. We're going to crush them. Bison are going to win, like always. The freaking other team is going to lose. All I know is I am very excited to I watch this I think I'd pump game. the brakes on the blowout talk. I think we're actually going to be seeing a good game. That's all I will say for this week. I'll be honest, I just hope both teams have fun. <laughs> sure you well, do. Well, now let's have one last check of our weather. Tomorrow will be a rain-snow mix as opposed to the rain we got in Fargo today, with highs staying in the mid-30s. Bundle up for the football game Saturday, especially if you plan on tailgating before the game, with expected conditions similar to Friday. However, after the weekend ends, we should expect to see more clear skies and more comfortable fall weather with highs gradually raising throughout the week, starting with more cloudy skies and low 40s on Monday, potentially to, up, to potentially upper 40s, low 50s by the end of next week. Don't like all the rain, though, and I also don't like that they, uh, had in the for they added in the forecast that there's supposed to be rain on Tuesday. It's another rain-snow mix like this weekend. Not looking forward to that. I don't like rain and snow mm -hmm. at the same time. <laughs> I just happen to agree with you so hard on that. I will be definitely bundling up for the game on Saturday. Well, thank, you for watching, thank you for watching this edition of Bison Information Network News. Catch us back here next Thursday night at 6. Have a great night, everyone, and stay warm.